you were probably one of the inspirations why I got in skydiving. So I've done almost 100 jumps in Spain and Madrid. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think when I started doing jump like 30s, 40s, that's where you just kind of start realizing how cool it is. And Yeah, and the, the first like 20 or 30 jumps kind of suck because yeah. you're always getting assessed and you're really limited by the weather and you spend a lot of time waiting. As soon as it gets a bit windy, like you know, the A licenses are all just cut from jumping Yeah, for those day. who don't know about skydiving much so uh, there's uh, three or four different license a b c d i think i do i have a d now i think so i'm not sure a, b, there is c. e license but most people don't really need to go above uh d license yeah, yeah, yeah. d license kind of so every license basically gives you different uh, um you have a, a, di- a different amount of jumps and then you're allowed to jump in certain uh circumstances in certain weather so yeah, or like start doing different courses. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the most fun I started having when uh, I would be jumping with other people and you come up with different ideas, what you're going to do. Yeah. So two guys jump out first and then you chase them and then you um, do the togging together and it's insane. I, I really start enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, once you got your B license and you're approved to jump with, you know, like small groups of your mates, that's when you start having fun. That's what they call it, fun jumps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Looks man, this is sick. That's one hell of a way to start the day is to go and <laughs> like 6 a.m. go and climb a, um, a rope up in the sky. You know, with the music and everything. Yeah, so I had like a little foot loop. Um, I'd been lowered down by my friend Graham, who's a stunt coordinator and a rigger. So he sent me down like, like a three to one um, belay. And then, yeah, I've got my rig weighs 10 kilos. Um, and then yeah, you can see the helicopter that that other shot was from. And uh, with no warm up and 10 kgs on your back, oh my god, that is hard, dude. Like I couldn't really walk. Like the hot air balloon basket is so small. There's no. And the room. gravity is much stronger, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> as further you're away from the earth, is just yeah. And here but you dude, like- letting go of that rope and just for the first few se- seconds of a helicopter or a balloon jump, you feel absolutely nothing and you have no reference for your falling yeah yeah, apart from like the balloon if you're looking at it and yeah man it's sick as it's just like you feel nothing completely weightless and then Mm. that gradual acceleration like when you jump off a wall and you've got an environment around you you know things are moving in your yeah yeah, yeah, visual periphery when you're just looking at the sky and the earth and you let go it's yeah it's insane dude i can imagine i can imagine um, how long it took you to arrange that? Uh, was that the plan for a couple of years already before you uh, did it? Or Me and my friend Ozzy, who um, helped facilitate that and sort of like link me up with the helicopter pilots and um, sort of get the jump um, legit and all that kind of stuff. Um, he and I started floating that idea around kind of two years before we did it. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, I, I was back in Oz and I was like, dude, we've got to do this. Let's, yeah, let's hit it, man. Otherwise, this, this was in Australia. What city was this? Yeah, that was a little bit out of Melbourne. Um, and you know, the thing with helicopter jumps, well, no, more so with um, balloon jumps. Um, obviously, like with a helicopter, you can steer it to wherever you want. Um, with balloons, there's no um, directional control on them, so you're kind of at the mercy of the wind. Oh, so those right. guys are super experienced with understanding what the wind is doing and they have instruments and gauges for knowing what the wind is doing at different heights. So if they want to steer themselves towards a certain point, then they'll use different heights, different altitudes to sort of ride this bit of wind that way, go up, ride this bit of wind that way mm. to get vaguely where they want. Yeah, um, obviously, because you need to get to the drop zone. You can't just fucking land yeah, anywhere like you want. If, if the wind is only really going one way, well, then you're going that way. Then you land, so, land in someone's uh, garden. Yeah, pretty much. But where we went, we knew that there was just, you know, massive open fields. So all you really need to do safety-wise is just try to land into wind and so you don't have like a hectic downwind or landing, yeah. which would just be super fast. And, you know, just look out for power lines and roads. Oh. It's dangerous to get into uh, Mike's uh, Instagram because uh, are you just so easy to get off the track of things what we were talking about? <laughs> we started with free running and all of a sudden it's gets into skydiving. It's gonna be um, sick. Talk about um, base jumping. You kind of mentioned earlier today while we were doing some climbing and before that that you are thinking in getting in a 
base jumping. For those who don't know what base jumping is, usually the uh, practice is that you need to have at least 200 skydive jumps, and then you start jumping off bridges, off high buildings, and all that kind of stuff. And base jump, jumping, why, why does it call base jumping, by the way? That's an acronym. So bridges, antennas, spans, earth. So spans would typically be the... Um, Base is like basically oh something no, sorry. called no, no, no. holes. B is for buildings. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to double up there. Um, yeah, no. So buildings, antennas, spans, and earth. Um, mm. So yeah, any like static fixed thing that you can jump off. Pretty much. And so there's jumping. And um, so also that's the practice 200 jumps. But um, I heard and I've talked to some people, some people do it without 200 jumps, which is yeah, crazy dangerous. Nutty. And also, there are different ways to do base jump, uh, whether someone is holding, uh, what was the name of the little thingy, what is outside the... Uh, pilot chute. Yeah, so the pilot, pilot chute. pilot assist, where someone holds your pilot chute so that your canopy extracts at the highest sort of possible point, which is yeah. kind of the same as doing a, a, um, a static line. But a static line can be sort of independent, like you tie something that breaks um, to, your, like, to a fixed object, like a handrail or something. Um, PCA, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just people grabbing. There you go. Look, shoot. These guys are jumping out of the cliff. Look that looks sick, man. That looks insane. Like, that looks beautiful, but yeah, personally, I'm not super keen on doing Scariest. lowish base jumps like that. And like cliffs like, around as well. If the wind blows you and you just kind of smash. More it like if you have a 180 opening, which like eventually you do enough jumps, like people do end up having 180 openings. And yeah, it's like getting smashed back into some rocks. What any opening is that when you do like a flip and then pull? Or? No, so when your canopy opens, um, it can open backwards. Oh. And then you unwind to the way your canopy is facing and you get flown back into what you've just jumped off. Oh, Which is, yeah, obviously like pretty suboptimal if that's And like that is what cliff. Mike is considering doing. And he said like, oh, it's quite difficult to be in a relationship if you could die any time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and what that's what they say about base jumpers. There's no young base jumpers. That there's yeah. a saying because they the the death rate is so high. You know, old base jumpers. There, oh, sorry, there's no old base jumpers. So yeah, 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 there's only young base jumpers. Uh yeah. I mean, either people die or like obviously it's like some people get out before the game gets them. But um, yeah, depending on the type of base jumping you're doing, like it's. Some are a lot safer than others. And, like, any activity is kind of as dangerous as you make it. But, um, yeah, base jumping definitely has, like, a pretty high death high rate risk. compared to and, a lot um, of sports. Yeah, and this is the thing, like, again, can be just assumed by general public, not enough information. When I s did skydiving in Madrid, I met this really, really smart dude uh, from Germany who's uh, uh, been pilot for years. He's uh, flying these big-ass planes. And he is doing skydives, like, I don't know, like thousand skydives, whatever. Uh, and then he's been doing base jumping for years now. Yeah. And when I said to him, like, so, but what about, are you not afraid? Like, so many people die. And he's like, they die because they fuck it up. Because they not, because they mess up things. They're, they're in a hurry. they like, not paying attention to weather. They just want to jump. They just, you know, it's a big difference between adrenaline junkie and someone who is... Uh, analyzed and wants to have this this cool experience yeah so if you do it properly and you you follow the steps of this uh of the oh safety, yeah there's, totally there's there's always ways to massively reduce the risks and likelihood of anything going wrong so yeah like that's why i say it's kind of as dangerous as you make it but then like with anything things can just go wrong for no yeah. particular reason. Yeah, but I think, um, um, is this statistically is uh, more dangerous to ride a motorbike on a uh, on road than to do a skydiving? I think someone told me that. Oh, yeah, people who, like, people who say that, oh, no, it's too dangerous, I would never skydive, but it's like, you drive a car, dude. Yeah. Like, you're probably more likely to die driving than you ever are skydiving. Yeah, there you go. And now safety is so 100%. much higher. And you also mentioned before that there's, a, what was the name of that system? Cypress system, where in, if in some case... AAD, automatic activation Yeah, device. if you fail. And they uh, two of the main ones, one was Cypress, another one was... Cypress is, yeah, one of the main brands. Yeah. Um, but pretty much, yeah. So if that little computer in your rig detects that you're still falling at a low altitude, then your reserve canopy will literally, Just it's spring-loaded. Yeah. It'll explode out and um, then... Even if you're unconscious, you'll be under canopy 
uh, on a sort of like half break setting instead of like toggles it's gonna out shoot full. whether you want it or not honey that's yeah. what's gonna happen look at this guy look at him falling in oh that looks sick that looks fucking awesome <laughs> That looks fucking awesome. I have a video with me doing skydiving. Like you would want to know <laughs> what is so going. well what your surroundings are and the, oh, in like this case? how like the depth of those clouds and what you can get away with canopy wise. Like I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be doing that if there wasn't a lot of space. That's insane. And they'd probably done that jump before, but yeah, it looks really really cool. Um, okay, skydiving, base jumping, and uh, when do you think you're gonna do your first base jump, and how do you want to do it? W what would you jump off? Um, oh, so there are dudes who run courses in America, and they part of their course actually goes to Europe. Mm. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is now with restricted travel, but usually that's kind of how they run it. They sort of do a lot of bridge jumps in America. There's one bridge in America, I'm pretty sure, where you're allowed to legally base jump so they run a lot of courses there and then they go and do some tracking jumps so a tracking suit is kind of like a wingsuit one of those there you go i'm showing sure right suits. now on the video yeah what's this dude flying yeah he's running a little wingsuit um so a wingsuit gives you some glide ratio that you can't otherwise get um but you're kind of in a bit of a straight jacket um you know it's not totally ideal if you have a malfunction and you need to start grabbing stuff above your head. Like you can do it, and you know there's big zips on the arms. Yeah, but, but it takes um, a time to get out of it. So that's something. What you haven't done, have you? I haven't flown a wingsuit. No, I've got a tracking suit. So a tracking suit gives you extra surface area, and it inflates like a wingsuit mm. um, to give you some glide ratio. Just not as good as. Well, it depends on. There are some big tracking suits now that kind of the glide ratio is match a small wingsuit. Yeah, if I had you, a friend. Fly it well. My mate did uh, um, wingsuits over uh, pyramids in Egypt. Oh man! During the new uh, Christmas. Let's see. Um, he comes to Arch. Uh, there's a place where we climb uh, the Arch in London. Yeah. And uh, his name is uh, Mike. Big shout shout out to my dude Mike. Uh, he basically, he's a proper nerd. Like, you know, the skydivers nerds yeah. who just like know everything and all the best places where they come together and all the stuff. Uh, yeah. What he does by day is programming and by, yeah. by night he skydives. And yeah, and he showed me the video and he had this 360 camera uh, yeah. and it just looks insane. I don't like those 360 cameras. Oh, man, some of them, some of the people just who are flying them just go too crazy with like the perspective and it just looks I don't know. To me, it looks, looks silly. But what I was going to say with um, base jumping, yeah, like the only base jumps I'm really sort of like drawn to and want to do are like big wall, decent free fall, track the hell away from mm. what you've jumped off and enjoy the flying time instead mm. of like jump pitch, seven second canopy ride land. Like that's not worth it for me. Yeah. So there's like, there's a 4,000 foot wall in um, Norway in a place called Sharag. And, uh, that place is just stunning. What part dude. of Norway is that? I don't know. Um, or you just know uh, the place and that's it's it? It's just, yeah, like the actual wall um, or that area is called Sharag. That's like K-J-E-R-A-G mm. or something like that. And um, yeah, man, it's one of the best base jumping spots in the world. It's awesome. And yeah, man, like, like I know I can kind of take up base jumping, go and do some jumps like that and then kind of just put it to bed a lot of people get very addicted to base jumping and then just kind of it takes over and then they start like jumping off stuff that's like lower and lower and mm. like ultimately like higher and higher risk. And, and then eventually they just don't need canopy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I jump off the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm not about that life at all. There I just kind of, I want to do some like some big walls, fly the shit out of my tracking suit and um, yeah, kind of just put it to bed and then crack on with everything else. I, I might change my mind. I don't know, but that's kind of the way I imagine it. I know some guys who've kind of done that, but most people get kind of suckered in and then just want to like, just do nothing but base jump, which is fair enough. I imagine flying off cliffs feels pretty awesome. <laughs> out of four, well, did you say 400 jumps? Uh, yeah. I've You've done out of 400 jumps. Did you have any fun situations? Uh, no, I've never, never had any like, anything particularly hectic happen. I've never had a cutaway, which is where you have a malfunction that you need to um, deal with by getting rid of your main and deploying your reserve. Yeah, so for those who don't know, like you have uh, two canopies, always two canopies, two parachutes. Americans say parachutes, Brits say canopies. Um, so what do Aussies say? 
Yeah, canopies. Canopy as well, yeah. Uh, that's the British influence right there. And um, yeah, so if it's, let's say it's ripped or it's really entangled and you can't get out, so you do the cutaway. Yeah. So there's a special setup in your on your rig or on your, how else you can call it? Yeah, rig equipment, rig. yeah. Your um, container. Container is like, yeah, kind of like the backpack. Like portion yeah, and there's a special... Uh, I haven't had that for it. Yeah, yeah, like handles. Handles, yeah. and you just uh, just dip, uh, do the cutaway, and then automatically the other one shoots out, right? Because the ADD gets activated, right? N- not No, depending on your altitude. Is it ADD? A- AAD. A- if you, <laughs> you've got ADD, <laughs> I've got an AAD. <laughs> I just would love that uh, some of my mates from uh, uh, skydiving, they would watch this and they were like, oh my God, of course, just listen to these noobs. Yeah, no, if if you have a cutaway at a high enough altitude, I think most AADs activate somewhere between 700 and 900 foot. Mm. Uh, Kind of, it varies. I think they can be set differently, but that's generally about where they activate. So you don't have a long canopy ride. Uh, assuming you have a good opening, mm. then um, yeah, you won't be under canopy for a particularly long time. But if you cut away higher, then yeah, yeah, your AAD shouldn't be activating. Oh, it wouldn't activate, so it will still wait to you till you go lower. It doesn't go out straight away when you do the cutaway. So your AAD just it only activates only when you get the certain altitude. If you're free falling at a certain speed, mm. um, then. Yeah, at a certain altitude, it'll go, this is a problem, and it'll activate. Okay. But, but I thought but when you do but the cutaway, it shoots out straight away, no? The AAD has nothing to do with a cutaway oh, above okay. a certain height. But would it activate to get the canopy out? No. No, it wouldn't. No, oh, okay. no, no. Because I that's thought that's what it triggers when you do the cutaway. Triggers. No, no, no. no. The no. handles, uh, it's all just like physical, mechanical So stuff. basically, you would do cutaway, and then you would still do free fall. Till a uh, ADD. No, no, you cut away with one handle and then you deploy the reserve. That's with the what other I was handle. saying. That's yeah. what I was saying. So you deploy. Yeah, I already forgot all yeah. that. Yeah, okay. no, the, the AAD is literally just there as like an absolute last resort. Last resort. Yeah. Pretty well, much. Well, anyone who wants to get in skydiving, there's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, for me, I think good out safety of, and technology. Yeah. Don't worry about it. For out real. of <laughs> out of nine uh, how, ninety uh, jumps, what I've done, um, I think only one time I had uh, crossed uh, lines, twisted to, lines, just yeah. twisted lines, and I just the easy, yeah, easy the best, them, like the it. best solving I've seen of some hectic twisted lines was um, a dude kind of like inverted himself in his harness and then got his feet and like walked them like that along the lines to untwist himself. Oh, wow. Because the, otherwise the main way people do it is by pulling them. But if yeah. they're super, super yeah. twisted, like that's really hard. You have to kind of like wrench your whole body yeah, around yeah, yeah. and bicycle your legs. So how did he uh, do it again? And he just kind of like pulled on his risers, which are the straps that connect to the lines which yeah. connect to your canopy. And then he just kind of got his legs up and then he just walked his feet on the lines to kind of like untwist. Oh, wow. Which is pretty cool. And it's quite insane to see guys deploy or open right next to you. That's when we went through the course. Yeah, that of, is not ideal at an, all. It's not fun, uh, but it. But we would do the hop and pop uh, and we did the hop and pop course. And so like five or six of us would jump quick, quite quick ne- next to each other. Yeah. And then so whether some of us were in a free fall, they were fucking up something or whatever was happening. But I remember as I just uh, opened my canopy and I just see next the guy next to me, you can see him falling and he's just opening the pre- and it just feels yeah. so creepy. It's like yeah, if you man. would be like, I don't know, 30, 40 meters closer, you'd just land on my head. I've, yeah, I've seen some low cutaways as well where you're like, under canopy and you're kind of coming in for like your final approach or whatever or like you've started your circuit your like your landing pattern to come in and touch down there's like there's kind of like road rules but in the air for yeah yeah, yeah. um so that people don't have collisions and yeah you're like getting pretty low and you're getting ready to land and then you just kind of like see someone like just get a reserve out and you're like oh my god yeah (laughs) like yeah that is that is quite insane. Okay, cool. Skydiving. That's it. No more skydiving. Next, what I want to talk about is stunts. All right. Or, ninja, stunts. or ninja Warrior. Which one do you want? Let's go stunts. Let's go stunts. Let's do stunts. 